I have some code here and when I run this code we see that we get an output with a blank window and whenever I click we get red dots appearing at my mouse location. Now this is great however when I close the program and if I go ahead and reopen it we will see that our that we currently don't remember the dot locations and every time we open it it starts again blank. Let's go ahead and change that in this video with a save and load system that will remember the locations of our dots. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is inside our project structure we're going to make a new folder and call it its save underscore data. This will be where all of our save files will be going. We're also going to create a new file called save load system. This will be where we store, actually we're going to call it save load manager. This is going to be where we store all of the required code for the save load system. So we're going to start by importing pickle. This is what we're going to be used to serialize our data. This comes built into Python, so no, so no need to worry about having to install anything. Ne the next thing that we're going to need is OS. Now we're going to create a class called called save load system system and then we're going to need to create an initializer so inside this initializer we're going to need file underscore extension and we're also going to need the folder that we're going to save to let's go ahead and initialize these self.file underscore underscore folder Okay, that's our initializing initialization done. Let's go ahead and create some methods. These are going to be used for saving and loading the data. The first one is going to be called save underscore data. It's going to call take self. It's going to take the data that we're going to store and the name we're going to store it under. Now we're going to say data underscore file is equal to open. So we're going to open up a new file. This is going to be called self dot save underscore folder. So the root directory that we're going to be, or the root folder that we're going to be storing this in, plus we're going to do a forward slash, then the name, then we're going to do self plus, so it's going to be the name plus the self.file underscore extension, and then we're going to open this with write bytes permission, because we're going to be writing bytes to this file. Now we're going to say pickle.dump data, data, and then data underscore file. So what this is going to do, what we've basically just written, is we're going to open up a new folder, and it's going to take the name that we pass here. Then we're going to use pickle to basically write the data into the data file that we've just opened. And that data file is going to be under the save, folder, the save data folder we've created here. So now that we have a function or method at least for saving this data, we also need one for loading it, which is also just as simple. All we need now is a name. Then we're going to copy this line here with the only modification being that instead of writing bytes, we're going to be reading bytes. Then we're just going to say data is equal to pickle.load data so file so we're just going to load whatever's in this data file into this data variable and then just return it so now if we go back into main.py and we import this we're going to say from save load manager import save load system then we're going to come here and we're going to say save load manager. So we're just going to create an instance of it is equal to save load system. The file extension we're going to use is dot save. You can use whatever you want. And the folder we're going to be saving everything to is called save data, just like we created here. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're going to come and we're going to make it so that whenever we, um, whenever we, exit our game so wherever we click the little x in the top right that's going to be when we save so we're going to say save so when here in the, the when we're handling the quit of our game we're going to say save load manager dot save let's go data and then we're going to say under here we're going to need the data to save so whenever we click in this in this little game we have going here we append the mouse position to this entities list and then we just draw a circle at every position in the entities list. So obviously saving the entities list is what's going to save our little red dots. So here we're going to pass entities for the data and the name is just, we're just going to call it entities. 
that's not how you spell that. Okay, so now if I go ahead and run this, we will see we get our game. We can place dots. If I just go ahead and make a little smiley face, that's a very messed up smiley face, but it works. And if we go ahead and close this, you'll see that we don't get any output. However, now if we go and look in our save data, you see we have this new folder here, or this new file at least, called entities.save. If I go ahead and click this, you could see it can't because in this case it uses binary, so that is good. Now, if we want to go ahead and see this data again, what we're going to say is instead of saying entity is equal to a blank list, we're going to actually move it underneath here. We're going to say entities is equal to save load manager dot load underscore data entities. So now if we go ahead and run this, you'll see that we get our smiley face. So this works. However, we would ideally want this process of checking if the, sa if the save file exists and then if it does, loading it in, and if it doesn't, starting from scratch to be automatic. So let's go ahead and close this and start writing that. So back in our save load manager, we're going to need to create a couple more methods here. So first one is going to be check for file. This is going to be used to check if files exist. So it's just going to need self name. And we, all we're going to do in here is we're going to return os.path.exists. And then I'm just going to go ahead and copy this bit of code here. So we're just checking if a file exists. That's going to be useful later on. Now we're going to need to say define load underscore game underscore data. So this will be the method that's responsible for loading in all of our game's data at once. So if we have multiple things we need to save, this method is going to come in handy. So we're going to need files underscore to load. This is going to be a list that tells um, this method all of the different files from the save data folder that we need to load. So then we're going to need default underscore data, which is going to be used. So let's say that we want to load in a game. We get to the save data folder and there's nothing in it. Then we're going to have a bunch of variables that need uh, to have some sort of value. So that's where we're going to come to this default data list. And we're going to basically ask it, okay, what data, what default data should this variable take on? So you'll see what I mean in a bit. Let's just make a new list here called variables. Then we're going to say for index, comma, file in enumerate through the files to load. So we're going to get the index and the file value of each uh, element of the files to load list. And we're going to say if self dot check underscore for file so we're checking if the file exists and if the file does exist we want to load it in so we're going to say variables dot append um self dot load so we're loading in the data file and then if it doesn't exist we're going to say variables dot append we're going to want to load in the default data that's associated with this index. And then we're going to come here and we need to return all this data. So we're going to say if the length of data is greater than one, we're going to return it as a tuple. And then this will automatically be unpacked. So we're going to return the tuple of variables. And whoops, this needs to be variables else we just have one thing in our list then we're just going to return it so we're just going to say variables zero okay so that's our method for okay that's our method for loading in the game data so now we just need one more method for saving all our data in bulk so we're just going to say save game data this needs a lot less code because Whenever we're saving the data, we don't have to go through any of those checks. So we're going to just take a list of all the data we need to save and their associated file names. So now we're just going to say for index, comma, file, in enumerate, uh, enumerate through data to save. Then we're going to say self.save underscore data self.save underscore data file and then the th 
get the associated file name using the index. Okay, that's the save load manager done. Now we can come back here. And what we're going to want to do is instead of saying that entities is equal to save load manager dot load data, we're going to say it's equal to load underscore game underscore data. And what it's going to need here is the name of the file that it could potentially be in. So we're going to put that in a list because we could have multiple and call it entities because that's what we've got it named as. And then the default value is going to be also inside the list and the default value for our entities. So if there's nothing here, if the save file gets deleted, then the default value we're going to want is just a blank list. Okay, so now that we've got that, we can, we are good to go with the loading. And for the saving, instead of saying save load manager dot save data, we're going to change this to save underscore game underscore data. And this is going to need a list of what we need to save. So entities and the list of corresponding names. So entities as the name. Okay, so I'm pretty sure if we go ahead and run this now, you can see there's nothing in our save data. So when I go ahead and run this, sure enough, we get a blank window. If I just go ahead and place down two dots and I go ahead and exit, you can see we now get this entities.save and we now get our two loaded in automatically. And I can go ahead and add more here. I can just, if I just go ahead and add a bunch more dots, go ahead, close that, open it again. You can see we get all of our dots loaded in. Now what's great about the system is that we, if we have multiple variables that we need to save the values of, so let's just say here we have a number that we need to save. So if there is a save file for this number, it's going to be in a save file called number. Otherwise, the default value is going to be one. And to make this easier to visualize, I'm just going to go ahead and print out our two, our two values here. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete this save file. Then, um, so we got that. And then what we want to do is that if we right click, we're going to event dot button is equal to three. I believe, yeah, that is right click. Then we're going to change the value of this number to three. Then we just need to remember to save the value here. So we're just going to add in number and we're going to remember we're calling this save file number. Okay. So now if I go ahead and run this, you will see that our two values, our two variables are this blank list for the entities and our number which is one because that is the default that we have put in. All right, so now if I go ahead and click, let's just do a couple different dots here. And then I go ahead and close. And then I click again to open it. You'll see that we now have some values. These are our values, our positions of the red dots as in our entities list. And we still have one as this default number. Now, if I go ahead and I right click, nothing happens. However, if I go ahead and close this and open it again, we will see we now have three. So therefore the data that was inside this number has changed. And, sorry, if we now have a number save file here and inside here, there will be the number three being saved. Okay, guys, that is my tutorial on how to create a save load system in Pygame. I hope you enjoyed. Before we end, I would like to say a massive thank you to Finks for the awesome support on both Discord and Patreon. And anyway, guys, if you want more tutorials like this, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you all next time.